Welcome to my nightmare. Welcome to the Ark Death. It's time to learn. Thanks guys for tuning in. I am Primetime. Hopefully you guys liked my Batman voice. That was uh, my, my best rendition of Batman, bar none. Just wanted to thank you guys for tuning in. We're going to be doing some custom art today. Who's excited? I know I'm excited. Today we're going to be working on a panel I'm doing with my partner. We are going to be painting this using a few paper stencils to do some mapping and the rest we're just gonna bomb on this freehand now this piece is something that uh, we have been working on we are not yet complete I will be finishing this over several videos so please if you have any questions if you have any feedback we'd love to hear from you we're going to be creating some cool custom videos here on the channel. We're going to be pushing the bar a little bit, seeing what we can come up with. Try to keep things a little bit fun. I definitely love my dark art, so I'm going to be playing with that a little bit. And we're going to create some cool things here on the channel. Now, as you can see, I've just tack ragged my piece. This is a very important step. For all of you new airbrush artists, I cannot stress this enough. A clean surface means the difference between a successful paint job and having a lot of peel issues if you do any masking. I didn't know this early on. Definitely was not a good day when I learned it. So I feel your pain. This is because when dust does sit on the surface, the paint covers it, you may not see it, but it has zero adhesion to that surface. So the minute you put your tape over top of it and press down, well, let's just say that ridges like to grab tape and dust likes to come out of the paintwork. This can be a very big challenge to fix, so want to be careful keep it clean now I'm going back in now and I'm actually gonna be blowing this off just again to make sure that all the dust is off at this point you could also use some final wipe make sure you're using the right products for your paint if you're using a solvent it'll be a different than if you're say using a water-based acrylic like Createx Alright, so now I'm coming in and I am laying down the initial detail. So I'm coming in with a micron. As you can tell, I was going to do this with talking, but I've decided to since change it to an overlay. But I am coming in with my micron and I am doing a mismatch of squiggles cross thatches and figure eights to create the under texture of the bone now don't rush this be patient because the more time you spend on this the better texture you will have in your end result So as you can tell, I've sped this up now to 
try to get through some of this detail a little faster. Now you're going to hear Lauren behind me. Her air is going to be going off and on as she is working on her panel while I am overlaying the audio on this video. Lauren's been working on her project for the last few days using the video that I'm making for you now as her guide. If you guys have any questions, please feel free to throw them down in the comment section. How do you guys want to see us develop this? Where do you want to see us go? What kind of artwork do you want to see us make? What do you want me to challenge myself with? I want to hear from you. I want to hear your opinions. I want to hear your ideas. I may not agree with them. I may not do them. Or I may get really excited about an idea and take it as far as I possibly can. Only time will tell. As you can see, I am still moving forward doing the exact same cross thatch, figure eight, and squiggles. Now I'm working in the brightest areas first. That's very important. When you're looking at your reference image, you want to make sure that where you're starting to paint are the high spots. The same as if you were sculpting. You want to lay down your highest spots and then blow down into your darker spots. Now, given that you are spraying with white paint, that is kind of a bit of an oxymoron to say, but as you paint, you will notice that it starts to come together and you start to get this realistic value. Now, when you're first going through with your first color, everything's going to look a little bit fuzzy. That's okay. We've got a lot of steps to go through to get this exactly where we want to be. I may change something halfway through a piece. It's very common. Working into the eye and the underbone. All right, so now we're working into the eye. Same way, we are just softly blowing in as we will be coming back in with black and some dark tones later to really sink that eye into the skull. Now if you notice I'm being extremely, extremely loose when I'm working up in this section because the only reason I'm working up in this section is to give me the under skull for where this scorpion will overlay in the future. This technique will allow for a little bit more of a 3D look. You do waste a little bit of time because you are going to be texturing areas that will be covered. But I just genuinely like to like the way it looks when it comes out. As I really do love to just stay on freehand. I hate paper stencils. I hate plastic stencils. They have a lot of value, and there's a lot of things that you can do with them. But me as an artist, I just... I like to try to do everything I possibly can with the airbrush. And I see so many other airbrush artists 
doing more airbrush work with with stencils or with erasers and and it's such a cool technique but I don't know I just have this tendency to just want to challenge myself with pulling everything with my airbrush everybody has their own technique everybody has their own way you're all artists no matter what you do just create from your heart create from your mind and don't give up because someone says they don't like your work. They're an idiot. Well, maybe not an idiot, but... Shouldn't put people down. Everybody's creating different levels, right? And what you're doing today may not be the best. And you may get frustrated with it. But you will get better if you put in the time. When I first started, there were many times when I thought I should give up and I should walk away. My airbrush was not doing what I was supposed to do. I started with a really good friend of mine. He started airbrushing. I think he got through one piece. I think he did a Spider-Man piece where the tip dry just was too much and he had a blowout and ruined a couple hours of his work. And that was it. Sold his airbrush, I think, a couple days later. At that point, I seriously thought about it. I'm like, wow. I had a lot of respect for the guy, so... If he was willing to walk away from doing this, how the heck was I gonna do it? Got a moment. But... I kept trying, I kept pushing through. Eventually, I started to realize that... I needed to be in control of my airbrush and not the other way around. Still working in fairly light. Now once I'm coming in with the texture and I get the entire area kind of textured out, then I will pull the airbrush back a little bit and I'm just going to flood fill that area with the white. The brightest areas, more concentrations of white. Again, I'm just still trying to lay down my base structure. But I want to bring forward as many of those surfaces as possible with this white. Before I start bringing in my undertones. You can see the rigidity now of the nose structure is starting to come in the framing around the eye they're still fairly soft but we will harden that as we go using the black and dark undertones Now we're going to be expanding way deeper in the art den than just doing airbrush. Airbrush is where I began, but it's definitely not where I ended my artistic knowledge. I dug in a little bit further. I've started to work on 3D poly sculpting, digital art. film editing. I've been dabbling with a lot of stuff to try to get better. Always looking for improvement, but definitely making good progress. So we're going to be doing more videos on more styles of art. We're going to be doing videos on vinyl wrap. We're going to teach you guys how to do them. We're going to teach you some tips and tricks. If you guys want to see those videos and you want to see what we can do, hit that subscribe button and ring that bell. 
I think that's going to be it for this installment of Late Night in the Art Den with Prime Time. We will be adding a lot more to this in the coming coming weeks. I do have a really cool graveyard scene intro that I am building in Blender. We're going to be building a couple videos on how we did that and, and what we're doing there, but stay tuned for that. That's going to be pretty cool. We have a couple vinyl wraps coming up. We're going to be doing some videos on those. Take you guys along for the ride. I just want to throw it out there that we are in the London area, London, Ontario. And we are looking for some shop space to expand, to do this filming. We have some ideas that we'd like to, to play with for you guys. We're looking for sponsors. We're looking for other companies that want to help push art, support art. We're looking for artists. If you want to do a live feed with me, let's do some projects. I'm totally down. Let's let's get in touch and let's do some cool stuff. I want to teach you guys. I want to have some fun with you guys. And I want to keep learning new art every day. Now we're going to come back every single week with new content. Watch for uploads in the middle of the week. I might surprise you. I do have a lot of content that I'm sifting through putting videos together. So we got some stuff coming up. That'll be pretty cool. I do have some old content of when we did the Can-Am Spider with Kingsman Customs. Those guys did all our clear work for us in their state-of-the-art booth. That was amazing. So we've got some feed and some video coming up for that that we've put together. And a whole bunch of other creations along the way thanks for tuning in guys it's been awesome to host you guys this evening thanks for tuning in I hope to hear or see from you guys next week I speak no good English keep it in there I'm human I screw up and so do you that's okay because some of the biggest screw-ups I've made in my art has actually turned into some of the cool coolest effects I've done. So, it's okay to mess up. But it's been a pleasure, guys. Thank you so much. I'm going to give you guys an update on the next video where Lauren's at on her piece. And she's making some good progress. It's looking pretty awesome. Have a good night. Get some sleep and enjoy those nightmares. Out from the art time. Out. <laughs> out from the art den. I'm prime time. And that's Lauren. Say good night, Lauren. You have a good night.